One thing I know about you, George, is you are the master with, in, in a subtle, subtle way, subtle way of winding up an opponent. Now, we used to do a show called Ringside. It feels like Ringside now, sitting at the table next to you, Johnny. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. We used to do a show called Ringside. And uh, uh, um, first of all, the first rivalry, big rivalry we knew you were in uh, was uh, the one with James DeGale. Uh, and that stemmed back to the amateurs. Uh, is there any love lost between you two still? Uh, no, we're not, we're not pals. <laughs> We haven't we haven't spoke since. We probably never never will speak again unless we're we're fighting. But uh, you know, some people really struggle with it. You know, like they they they're desperate as a as as a you know, boxing fan for everyone to get on. And I, I like to get on with people, believe it or not. But uh, I draw the line at James the Gale. So <laughs> yeah. No. Where did it stem from with James? Well, it's like we you know. We were club mates, stable mates. We boxed together at Dale Youth. Um, you know, he's came to come to watch me box. I've come to watch him box. I supported him. I gave him all his sparring when he won two ABA titles. And then as soon as I said, right, I'm having a go, and we were going to box each other, it just went sour. And, uh, and then I beat him. So uh, it definitely went sour, and it's sort of been the same since. It seems to kind of malfunction. There seems to be some kind of malfunction whenever you're mentioned when you box in the amateurs. He probably just couldn't get his head round that. I suppose it's the pyramid of, of the gym. You know, when you're coming through and the bigger guys that are there, they're more skillful than you, then all of a sudden you've grown up, you've got better, and they won't just won't respect that, respect the fact that you've turned into a better fighter. Is that probably what he did when you boxed him and beat him in the amateurs and in the pros? Uh, yeah, I, th I think so. Def definitely in the amateurs. Um... Yeah, he was the man to be. He was the England number one. He'd, um, I think he'd been to the, the Commonwealth Games then. He'd, you know, he was he'd, um, he was the man to beat. But I was was confident of beating him. You know, I'd, I'd done enough rounds sparring him in the gym. I knew I knew how to beat him. And uh, yeah, whenever when the time come, whenever the time come, it, 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 I did beat him. So. So you boxed each other in the amateurs, you boxed each other again in the, pro, in the pros. When it came to the pros, you seemed to have his number. You seemed to be able to know what buttons to press to wind him up even before you got in the ring. Was he being paranoid or, or you just knew what to do, how to wind him up? Uh, I, I didn't know how to wind him up. Poor, poor old James. It, was, uh, it wasn't the hardest thing to do. Um, he just, he just didn't, didn't really like me. He, he did, I don't think he could understand how... You know, I'd had success, so um, that was it. That was more than enough to sort of to, to get him going, get him riled up, and uh, you know, it might have worked to my advantage in in the fight or not. But it was it was definitely good fun in, in the build up. Made it made it all worthwhile. So, and it's, it's it's one of the, I think personally, maybe a bit bit biased, but one of the best rivalries we've had in British British boxing. You know, is genuine. Is genuine needle. There's no fabrication there. It's not a promoter sticking two people in a room. We don't tip tables over. We don't uh, conjure up sort of staged events. Uh, we we we're from the same part of the world, so to speak. You know, we box out the same amateur club, and we despise each other. <laughs> so it's just a real strange one, but. Um, it's, it's, it's genuine and I think that's why it's always captured the public's imagination. I'll tell you how genuine it is. There was a show on in Liverpool and you were both boxed on the same bill and uh, it came to the weigh-in and you were there with your, your crew and your family. James was there with his crew and his family. They tried to make sure they both got on the stage. They weren't fighting each other, they were fighting on the same bill. Uh, and they all, bump, all families bumped into each other in the back in the hallway and it kicked off like hell. I was trying to get my phone out to record that shit. But everybody was like, that's, that's how serious it was. Yeah, well, there, sorry, I know there's women here, but there was women involved. That's when there's always a big problem because it meant men, men all just sort of, you know, at best they might just give you a, a sideways glance, but women, you know, they, they're most fiery, especially come fight week. So, you know, I have my mum and sister in tow, James the has got... His mum, I think he's at least one sister. There was a the lot. Of, worth it. The it, it, it worth it started in the off. So I was. Um, I'll probably get in a lot of trouble for t telling this from from you know from the family, not from anyone else. But uh, I was seeing the doctor. I think it, it must have been before the weigh-in, and then it all sort of escalated very quickly in the corridor. 
here in the room next door, which I didn't know about. But I come out and knew James was there, and I thought, I'm just going to do that thing. I'm going to walk past, really cool. You know, when I get close to him, I'm going to turn to him and say, what? And then just carry on. It's going to be, it's going to look really good. It's going to be slick. You know, he's not going to have a chance to, you know, I'm going to catch him off guard. It's going to be great. So anyway, away I go, do a little power march. And, I'm away and I ca- he's staring at me and I can straight up. I said, what? And he sort of, he jumps back. And I go, yes, done him. Right, never forget. And then all of a sudden I can hear this pandemonium going on behind me. And it's like slowly turn around. And then it's just, yeah, the women are just at each other, screaming, shouting, and it's, it's all sort of kicked off. One of, one of the teams at the back sort of segregated, lost, trying to try and scoop him back in. We've got security trying to break everyone up. Uh, and we're boxing the next day, so uh, not obviously not boxing each other, but um, probably the last time I spoke to him was, was then. <laughs> so, Do you think you two would have a fight again? I, I don't know, I don't know. Um, he's just just fought as he? he had a real low key sort of fight out in the state somewhere um, but it's a big it's still been, a big sell if you two got in the ring together yeah uh, yeah possibly you know possibly i think so i think it won't take won't take much to sort of get the juices flowing with it but uh you know it, it, we'll have to wait and see i suppose you know who do you think needs who the most have you two uh, he certainly needs me a lot more than i need him you know uh I, uh, you know, I, I've recently been beat, unfortunately, but um, up until then, I've, I've been flying high. Every time our paths have crossed, I've beat him. Um, I feel if we both retire tomorrow, people, I'll go down as the better fighter, and that's all it really matters. I suppose. So. <laughs> I suppose he couldn't risk it happening a third time. You know. Uh, he couldn't risk losing a third time. What I'm yeah, saying. well, yeah, but, uh, th- that definitely. Um, I didn't see his fight last week, but the two fights before then, he hasn't really set the world alight. You know, obviously, I, I got ironed out on Friday last week, but up until then, I've been boxing pretty well. So, momentum hopefully still in, in my favour. Uh, he's got, you know, I've got it all to lose by fighting James DeGaulle. I've already got two wins over him, but. Uh, Still would be good fun to punch him in the face. So, yeah. you know, when we do this, that the gloves are off. You all, you know when it's for real. And that was uh, one of those occasions when you two walked into the studio. And I always said he should have the cameras on the second they walk in before you even start the show. Do a live feed. And the tension was mad. It was it was crazy. But everybody, it was like a a scary silence uh, when you two were like circling two lines, sitting down and. You just knew it was it, the, te- the tension was high. Before we go on to obviously the, the eighty thousand people, let's go. Let, let's jump forward. Uh, when you were in Manchester, you boxed uh, uh, a young man called Chris Eubank, and um, and that was a big. There was a big lot of noise about that fight. Uh, were you surprised that some people thought that that he had he he would beat you? Uh, but by this point in my career, I wasn't surprised at all. You know, I. Uh, yeah, I've seen that the, the ties change time and time again, and I've seen me be writ off sort of time and time again. Um, I was always really, really confident of winning, winning that fight and winning it well. But I knew because he sort of knocked out his previous opponent and because his dad, you know, was gaining real momentum, you know, he's back on the scene, you know, people were listening to him and they thought he was the messiah, thought he was the, he, he's the knowledge, he knows the stuff. Uh, the son was, you know, formidable. He's going to knock out any middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight, heavyweight, anyone. And um, pe- people were always going to get sort of sucked in because they are entertaining in that respect. But um, yeah, you know, it was it was a huge fight. I was excited for that. You know, uh, first time there's been a sort of a, a, a big a big sale that hasn't been on Sky pay per view. So that was it was exciting for me a bit more. Um, bit more history, a bit more groundbreaking stuff to come uh, from our side, but uh, yeah, no, it, was a, it, was, it, was, it was a great fight, a great win for me. It was a good build, up, a good atmosphere in Manchester. Manchester is probably, I'll say it again, it's probably one of the best cities in the world, if not the best city when it comes to fighting, if not the best city. The atmosphere is second to none before, during and after a fight. I can remember the day of the fight, uh, I went to the hotel around the corner, I saw his dad, uh, Chris Eubank Sr., and Chris beckoned me over to say, come, come, I have to show you something. So you got a video out of, of you and Junior sparring years ago. 
And uh, his dad said, my son doesn't need a trainer. That, to me, just boom, big alarm bells going there. My son doesn't need a trainer. He, he, do, he does it himself. So it shows ignorance and arrogance for him to actually think that. Uh, and you actually, made, you actually made the win look so easy in comparison to the rest of them. So, so you kind of taught him a lesson to say, look, you're going to learn to box. You, you need a trainer. Do you think he's licked his wounds and learned a lesson from that? From that fight with you? Uh, well, well, maybe. You know, I'm not. It's hard. It's really hard, Johnny. You know, I, I can tell him that at that point because I've been into big fights with, without a, a good trainer. You know, and um, you do need those guys. It's, it's tough for a fighter to sort of have that thing where you feel like you rely on someone else because it's not who we are. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you climb through the ropes, the bell goes, and it's just you. But you do need a real good, strong, you know, supporting team to sort of get the best out of you. And, uh, you know, his dad talks in riddles, so he's grown up listening to that. You know, it, it, is it going to be easy for him to find a trainer? I think it's going to be very difficult, do you know what I mean? And the person who I've seen him, the only other trainer I've seen him hanging out with is Floyd Mayweather Sr., who speaks in riddles, so maybe, maybe that is the answer, you know? Uh, you know, we want to... We can't understand him, but maybe Junior can. If you had to give him some advice as to say go to trainer to someone to improve you, make you better, who would you send him to? Who would you send him to go and train with? If you had to give him advice, I don't know. He's someone who would who would command his respect, who he would listen to. Do you know what I mean? So um, you're not gonna, you don't need to, you need to brush him up, really. I think you know he's he's got a great engine. He's he's physically very strong. Um, you get him to teach him to punch, maybe punch harder and add a few more layers to his game but you're not going to be able to reinvent the wheel with him because he's 29 he's boxed the way he's boxed for his entire life um, at the moment he needs a stacked target to have success so straight away if you're going to fight at distance or move your feet or punch along with him he's not going to have an answer for that so there'll be things that he'll be looking to um, nullify people's strengths in that respect and then be able to get his strengths, you know, implement them in a fight. But trainer-wise, I don't know, I'll train him. If, if, if he wants to, he can come down and do some, we do some pads. I don't think that got on too well, but I don't think he's done like that either. Uh, okay, let's talk that fight. That fight, uh, that, that rivalry between you and Mr. Foch himself. Uh, the first fight we see in Manchester, uh, he made the, 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 the f almost fatal mistake of not respecting you enough. Um, were you playing on that? Did you understand that's, that's, that was his weakness, part of his weakness? Nah, possibly, you know. I, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, the, vic the victors in, 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 in life can reinvent history, do you know what I mean? And, you know, uh, now it's almost like a, a foregone conclusion that, that Carl Froch underestimated the first time, but he was fit, he was, sh you know, he was sharp. They're the things that, Carl Foch does every fight, you know, when every box he was always fit, he's got a granite chin and, um, and, and he's there and he'll, he'll sort of grind you down. Uh, so, yeah, I put him over early in the first round. Uh, I put him over early in the fight in the first round. Didn't manage to get rid of him. And, uh, you know, 18 rounds later, I got, I got whatever many rounds it was, I got got knocked out of Wembley Stadium, so uh, you know, I didn't get the job done. But the drama you created here in Manchester by putting him down, if you took a picture of the people in the crowd, most of the people were like, what the fuck just happened there? <laughs> no, uh, you're right, you're right. If you, there's loads of pictures. The only one who wasn't shocked was me. <laughs> in the whole front row were like, and I'm just like trying to give it the, the look, you know, straight back to neutral corner. Um, so yeah, you know, I, we, I always thought I thought he, he, he's, he's, he's a strong fighter, but he leaves a lot of openings. I land one on his chin, I get rid of him, but I, uh, I, I dropped him. But I think it did, just did manage to get rid of him. I tell you one thing, it reminded me of, of uh, uh, the outcome wasn't was was worse, but it reminded me of Joe McLaren and, my, and uh, Nigel Ben when they boxed. When I was stood ringside, when you guys were fighting, I was like. We all were like, excuse my French, fuck it now, that is mad because the, the punches you were landing, both of you, sounded gruesome. They sounded, it, it, was, it was a real dogfight uh, to the point where we thought, 
you know, Carl was com- being, being completely res- reckless. So it could have been anybody's fight. Uh, you, because at that point, you, were, you, were, you, you showed yourself, you elevated yourself in that fight. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the first fight, you know, was, I mean, right up until the round where it got stopped is the first round where I feel he sort of had any sort of um, bearing in the fight. Uh, up until then, I, uh, <laughs> you don't really get a chance in boxing to punch someone numb, but that's what I did with Carl Foch. I punched him so many times, he went numb. I just had, didn't have an effect, you know. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, I was still, it was my first first big title fight, you know, I was working with a new training team, I'd only been with them, you know, seven weeks. Uh, I just went right hand happy. It was always right hand over the top. You know, I should have worked the body more. I should have put a few, layered the shots a bit better. And I think then maybe they would have had more of an effect. But um, it's just how, how, you know, that's life, isn't it, really? And, um, you know, full credit to Carl. He's, 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 he, he, took, he took the shots. He lasted in there long enough for, for Howard to stop it. So, you know, what can you do? Then you both created history. You've both got to get credit for that. You both created history by getting 80,000 people at Wembley Stadium. And it, uh, I can remember being at Sky and they, when it was first suggested, the bosses said, no chance. No, it's never going to happen. You know, maybe get 13, 14, maybe even 50. 80,000 people. That was like, I think it got to a stage where you couldn't walk anybody anywhere because everybody was talking about it. Yeah, it was, it was a huge fight. And um, it just, it, it was a real whirlwind, you know, from, from the stoppage of the first, the first fight into... Like really having to like battle to get to get everything put in place for the second fight. So I had to go to the States, went to New York to uh, sort of lobby the IBF to get me mandated again. Um, at the same time, I'm trying to hustle my way through deals, pretending to be meeting oligarchs in Russia and billionaires in Monaco and this, and trying to pretend that I had this big financial backing that we were going to stay, we were going to promote the show. You know, and I think. Eddie, Eddie knew that I couldn't, but Herb was still worried enough to say, "All right, we'll find." And I, you know, I got what, not what I deserved, but what I negotiated uh, in that in that first fight. We went to Wembley Stadium, you know, and it was it was groundbreaking. It was a massive sell, you know. It was just a complete, but but a real whirlwind experience because it just it sort of it flew by, and um, you know, it, at the time I remember thinking. It, it, win at Wembley Stadium and it totally uh, you know, writes, writes any wrong of the first fight, it, it eclipses any sour feelings or anything like that and I would have arrived, I would have made it, I would have been you know, the, biggest, uh, the biggest profile fighter in the UK and so many doors going to open for me and life was going to be good so uh, we went with it, we, we, we really pushed it. You set precedent because from doing that, 80,000 people in there now, Anthony Joshua performing there, getting the massive crowds, we know it can be done. All the overseas fighters want to come here to the UK because they've never seen anything like that. The, the, the UK crowds are something different. Uh, if a fight's salt right, the rivalry's right, the fight can go on right. Um, is it, do you think there's anybody else, bar, bar, frotch, you could probably get such, such. Say, for instance, say if it was James O'Gale, do you think you could do that at Wembley? Do you think that would uh, be interesting? Well, at the time, yeah, I think I think because it was it's just two um, two people who uh, can sort of capture the public public imagination. You know, what I mean, we um, me me and Frotch were two opinionated people. You know, we were given a platform to to speak. Everyone was listening, and also we had that that crazy set of circumstances where the controversy of the first fight. So that was just, just it, it was easy. It was just so easy to, to break that new ground. Um, I'm fortunate enough to be in an interested division uh, with some characters, you know, and some buttons that I can push and we can get stuff going. You know? so, deep deep out, yeah, maybe. Maybe that, that ship has sort of sailed now. But... Um, yeah, I, was just, I, I think I think if it, if it wasn't Frosch, then, then maybe, maybe Digal could have. But other than that, it's uh, it's just a one of them. One so of them. who do you dislike most, Frosch or Digal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's different. You know, Frosch can't seem to beat him, the fucker. Do you know what I mean? Like, so uh, he's a. Uh, I get. I, 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 I've had to cancel my Sky subscription now because he's, <laughs> he's on every week. <laughs> 
nothing to do with you, Jolly. You know, <laughs> no, um, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, Carl just never liked me um, off the bat, which was cool because then I decided not to like him. And uh, we both made a load of money. He made more and he beat me, so he's a fucker, do you know what I mean? Um, Degel, Degel I like more and more because I just keep beating him at everything, do you know what I mean? So uh, he's, you know, he, but this, the second, do you know what I mean? The second we're in a room together, I suppose, it would all come, come flooding back. So uh, I've got that smugness about me with Degel, which. Obviously, I can't afford with Frotch, so uh, it's, 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 it's a pick'em. It's a real pick'em. Okay, so, uh, it was, listen, you've created a lot of history there. Let's get to the next, last week. Uh, uh, you were involved in the, the Super Series. Uh, big shout, uh, uh, big tip. Tell us about the t- fight. Talk us through the fight with Callum Smith. Yeah, so... The... Uh, but talk us through the build-up first, uh, because we all have an opinion about what it seemed like before you got in the ring. Talk us through the build-up. How did, how did preparation for that go? Well, it's just <coughs> tough, tough, tough preparation. You know, obviously dislocated my shoulder in February, and um, it's been it's been a, a relentless journey. No excuses, um, but obviously you know, bit, bitterly disappointed to uh, to not have won. You seem to be one of the few fighters that don't seem to. Uh, you get it. You can be able, you can be able to separ- separate the two differences. Boxing's there. That's done. You don't identify yourself from from the fight game itself. It's not, it's hard, but it's not devastating. You think that's, that's part of my, great, my, my game, you've managed to just get your head around that side of it. Yeah, I think so. I think if you want to move on in life, really, if you want to uh, be happy and sane or content or whatever else at the end of boxing, then um, it's good to try and um, assess things properly and, and come to terms with them if, if they're not going your way or you're not happy with it. And, uh, you know, Try not to piss and moan in the in the meantime, do you know what I mean? Because that's just it's not healthy. It's not good for you. Uh, what about what about? I, I saw you getting on the scales, and I looked at you and I thought it, it doesn't look, it doesn't look right. It looks a little bit flat when you got on the scales. Are you still comfortable at super medal? It's a, it's a, it's a real toll. I mean, I'm probably about 14 stone now. <laughs> it's eight days later or whatever. So. Um, <laughs> That's 12, sub mills 12 stone, should I say. So he's waiting 40 stone now. That's so, the yeah, you know, I, it was weird, like, you were, you were away from home, Saudi Arabia. There was something about it that was a bit flat. But, you know, again, that's not an excuse because Callum Swift would have been experiencing exactly the same thing. You know, it, was, it had a real smash and grab feel about it. I wanted to get out there and get home as soon as possible. I was on the first flight home the next morning to the point where I packed my bags before we went to the, went to the arena, which I didn't know was a good omen or not. Um, so, you know, you know, one of them things. It, it's, a, it's a process getting ready for the fight. It's a process getting ready for the scales. But looking at the size of to Callum Smith, I'm pretty sure he's, he don't, he don't find it too easy to make the weight either. Um, we try and do it as healthily as possible, but also, you know, there's only so much you, you, you can do to make sure that you are, you know, at your very best come fight night. But um, I, th- I think I made, I made the weight okay, no different from any other fight. I looked at myself on the scales, you know, I always look a bit drawn, a bit gaunt, but a few hours later I'm back to life, you know, that's just how it is. Um, and I've, I've looked far worse in many other fights. So, uh, no, I was, I, was, I was confident with the prep. I was, I was confident that I'd had enough sparring, that I'd make the weight correctly, that we was fit, we was healthy, and that we was going to beat Callum Smith. And uh, right up until I got caught, uh, I still, still believed that I was going to, you know? So, uh, one of them things. What's next for you? I'm going to have a rest. <laughs> I'm going to have a break, uh, you know, at least for the rest of, rest of this year, so a few months off. Um, it's, been, it's been like we signed up for the tournament it was three fights in ten months which is just you know it's great it's great to have a fixture list in boxing it's great to know it's great to have a, you know some guaranteed paydays coming in providing you're winning etc but um, it was just you know it, it was longer than that uh, but I've been in the gym since before Christmas because a week after I boxed junior I had surgery and then rehab started so I've been in the gym grafting since since February like as if I'm in camp so yeah as well as all the other bollocks you have to go through outside the ring in terms of 
um, promotional staff, etc. Not knowing if you're going to get replaced, not knowing if you're going to where you're well, going. That was the talk. The talk was if you if you weren't fit and fully fully prepared, they were going to try and slip you back junior into fight to fight Callum Smith. Is that yeah. right? Well, yeah, that was the impression we were given. Um, it didn't make any sense, but things don't always do. And then uh, obviously the last the last sort of. Uh, uh, stunt was that we were going to Saudi Arabia so uh, it was great and then it was like okay well will the team be able to come how many visas can we get you know do you have to have a reason for going there you can't you can't get a visa without a reason you know you can't buy a ticket because there's no ticket so why, you can't be going out to watch an event if you haven't bought a ticket you know there was lots of things to to get through at the same time rehabbing a shoulder and trying to live a normal life as well so uh, yeah. So when you decide to pack it in, uh, I have a funny feeling that's not the end of George Groves. When you do decide, I think, uh, would, you, would, it, would, it be, would it be still involved in the boxing? Management, promotion, I think, uh, things I, like that? I don't know. Boxing might be sick of the sight of me and I might be sick of the sight of boxing by then. But uh, I don't know, I'd like to. I think I've got a lot, lot to offer in terms of outside of actually fighting. Trainer? No. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, be, couldn't be a trainer. I... Uh, I ain't got the patience. You know, I, ain't got, I ain't got the communication skills. I ain't got. If someone can't do something the first time, then I've I've lost interest. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, and I, I don't know. I just I, I think I think I'll, a lot of I'll be I'll be a good Eubank senior. I might ask what his actual job role is, and I'll be a Eubank <laughs> senior. <laughs> just has got. I'll learn a few poems maybe, um, <laughs> and just uh, you know, swoop in with some wistful words. And uh, and then yeah, sweep out again. <laughs> At the fight game itself, are you a student of the game? Do you still follow the game apart from watching guys in the old division? I try to, but but not so much. <laughs> I don't get to see as much boxing as I probably should do. Um, but that 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 will uh, you know with a bit, a bit more time. You get in, once I'm in camp, I mean I'm sort of switched off from everything else, and I'm not really interested in going to the boxing. I might watch it if there's a fight that I want to see, but. Um, you know, I end up just uh, critiquing too much, you know, and obsessing too much. So, but, but you know, I'm going to have a couple of months off now, so I'll probably get to a few more fights. Yeah, I'll enjoy it more. A bit of local news here. Rocky Smith, uh, Rocky Fielder is, um, is to fight uh, uh, Canelo Alvarez. What do you think of that? That was my fucking idea. I pitched, I pitched that to the team last week. I said, I'll beat Smith and we'll do Canelo. And I was like, two gingers. Uh, we were, <laughs> we'd be able to sell it some way. But... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a it's a strange one, isn't it? Really, you know. I mean, uh, Field is a big a big guy, you know. But is that as tall as, as Callum Smith, isn't it? Uh, I don't think I mean he is not, not quite as tall as Smith, but he's big enough. Yeah. So um, you know, I think uh, he's in he's in there with a shot just sort of just for his size alone. But uh, he's got a tall order to fight uh, Canelo in the states. Uh, but good luck to him. Good luck to him. You know what, I mean? what did you think of the Triple G Canelo fight? Haven't seen it. I don't watch a lot. Of <laughs> I don't watch a lot. You just switch yourself off. No, it was it was about a week week or so before my fight. So yeah, I'm sort of zoned out from boxing. And I'm, once I know the result, I can't be bothered to watch it. I'm terrible like that. I will, do actually want to go back and watch it because um, a few people would have said Canelo once. A few people said Golovkin. So it sounds like a real pick and fight. But I uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind going back and having a look. Uh, it'd be, it'd be, what, what do you think, Johnny? <laughs> it was a good fight. Was it? I think Canelo did a lot better than than I expected him to. I thought he'd actually get stopped this fight because it was definitely wasn't a draw the last time he boxed. Yeah. I spent some time in Big Bear. I trained up there before Badu Jack, and I used um, Golovkin's gym, Abel, Abel Sanchez, and I just it's just a weird vibe up there. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you're eight thousand feet above sea level. You can hardly breathe. It's exhausting getting out of bed in the morning and. Glofkin's out doing like, you know, pedestrian runs you know, every other day up and down the mountains. He comes in, he, Abel Sanchez doing pads in his jeans. I'm wondering like, well, when's he going to teach him something? He's just whacking the heavy bag as hard as he possibly can. And yeah, if he lands that big shot, you're going to go. But, um, you know, I don't know if the best best days of Glofkin's are, are behind him. So, uh, you know, someone, someone slick like, like Alvarez, I'm not surprised that he was able to give him a real run for his money and obviously... Obviously, be him.